Welcome to the Fashion Masterclass, and I'm Angela Taylor-George, and on today's episode, I'm super excited to be interviewing somebody that I met a little while back. Um, his name is Oscar Sanchez, and he has a curated collection of women's vintage clothing and accessories called Dry Clean Only. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Oscar in the stream. Hi, Angela. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. So great to have you here with me at the Fashion Masterclass. So I just want to say, I I met Oscar. Um, I was selling off things in my design studio, and Oscar came in, and that's when we first met. And he bought some hangers. I remember. I think he came back again twice, and then and then he got some fabric that he used in his Instagram feed with his clothing. So that's how I met Oscar. And I just want to say, um, it was really when I began to see that there were so many creators, like makers and creators and designers designers out there in New York City because a lot of times we always think of like the mega brands and you know just like the big names and the Calvin Kleins of the world and things like that but to yeah. really see that there was such a great creative community that was right there was really an eye-opener for me I'm super super inspiring so I'm so happy to have you here with me today Thank Oscar. You. That's very kind you're very inspiring to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you that's sweet. Thank you. So um I, I guess I'm just going to dive into the question. So um, I guess I have a question. When did you first realize that um, that you couldn't discern colors? I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that, that Oscar, basically, he began sharing outfits and different color schemes that were influenced by his colorblindness. So that's why I'm asking that question. So yeah, when did you first yeah. realize that? So um, ever since I was a child, I guess I always struggled painting landscapes. Like, you know, my my rivers will end up being pink or my skies will end up being purple. And it was just because that's the color that seemed blue to me. So ever since I was a child, I knew that, you know, there was like, different, like definitely like a special relationship with color. But I guess my parents never really cared to dig into it. And it was not until I was in high school that the teacher or biology teacher conducted a uh, uh, traits uh, bio test on the screen. And one of the tests was a colorblind test. So uh, I remember that's how I found out that I was colorblind because she tested me on colors. And that's where I got my answers from, you know, why all those years I had I had trouble differentiating certain colors. So yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So how does that play for you? How does that play into the ethos of your brand? Like, how does that really work? Um, well, you know, it's it started very experimental, but um, I definitely started seeing that everything I did um, sort of just went together because of the colors that I'm able to see. So there's only certain colors that I'm able to see in a picture. So every time I would do like a project, the colors kept on showing back and back and back. And I, and I could never, even if I try, I can't step out of that comfort zone because that's, those are the only colors that I can see. So that's how it just became a thing. Every, every picture that I made followed the same color palettes and, and it just stick. That's super interesting. Um, so what was the seed? Like what was the thought that you had for you to start uh, dry clean only? Um, I mean, it started, I've had the name uh, for a couple of years now, but it wasn't until I finally uh, stopped working uh, my corporate job and I had more time to be creative and experiment more with clothing. And also just, you know, as a, as a New York kid I, in fashion, like I feel like a lot of my wardrobe comes from thrifting and it was a big part of my, my fashion, you know? So I had uh, friends that just started asking, um, where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? And, and everything was thrifted, but it was curated. So that's where the seed came of, oh, I could do this and, and sell it to friends or sell it to people and, or sell the idea that I make of clothing. Yeah. That's great. And why the name Dry Clean Only? Why the name Dry Clean Only? Um, as, as I started uh, curating my wardrobe, again, I started realizing that most of my pieces were dry clean only. And I found myself, you know, making trips to the uh, dry cleaners every other week. Um, it, it's, it's sort of like a lifestyle in a way. Once you start appreciating clothing so much, you, you'll do it. You'll, take it. you'll commit yourself to a dry clean only wardrobe, you know? 
Yeah, you want to take care of your clothes, totally. Yeah. When you so what are like when you're when you're thrifting or you're looking, you know, to find pieces, what are some of the elements or the criteria that that you have in mind that, you know, it has to have this, but it shouldn't have that? Like what is it that that makes it, you know, worthy of being a dry clean only curated piece? Um, well, number one, uh, the quality. Um, I look for mostly natural materials, you know, a hundred percent wools or a hundred percent cottons. Uh, Cause that's, you know, you, you'll find a piece that was made in the eighties and I'm able to find it now in, in 2020, but it still has the same weight to it. It still has the same feel to it because it's, it's a hundred percent silk. And if someone really took care of it, it can last you for a lifetime. So that's one of the main things that I look for. Sometimes I will find incredible pieces, uh, but it would be, you know, like uh, some sort of polyester or something. And, and it just, I guess it almost takes the value away from me uh, when I see that polyester, uh, you know, tag to it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yeah. Um, so not, not that I want to, I don't want you to give away your secrets, but anybody that's maybe looking to start a business from thrifting, um, how do you source your, how do you source your things? Um, it's a lot of research that goes into it. A lot of, um, I think that's actually the most fun part of it. The, the sourcing process, cause you could just walk into any mom and pop thrift shop and just, you know, spend hours looking for something and you might walk out with the piece or you might, you know, anywhere in the world, you will find a thrift store. You would find a secondhand clothing shop. So it's it's more about the the knowledge or your particular style that you have in fashion that allows, I think, because I have, I, I know of other creatives that do the same thing I do, but if you look at their stuff and you look at my stuff, it's completely different. What they curate is completely different because of our personal style. Yeah, no, totally. Cause I do, I mean, I do a lot of my own thrifting and I have for many years yeah. and it is interesting. It is interesting when you know, you meet people that have thrifted and they have their own collection, like people's collections have like a certain vibe. Like, you know, one person's maybe more boho, one person's more like straight eighties, one person's nineties. What, and you could, yes, it's, it's interesting how certain collectors can have definitely have a signature look within you know, things that they're sourcing from all over the world. So it, it I love that too. And I love thrifting too. It, I love the yeah. thrill of the hunt. Yeah, totally. Um, and why is sustainability important to you? Mm, you know, it's to be completely honest, I kind of just fell into it. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I you know, be honest. <laughs> to me, to me, thrifting became more of a way to, uh, you know, be able to make that runway look as a as a fashion student without spending the designer budget. You know, being able to go and, and find the same construction, but maybe from the 80s, but at a, at a more affordable price. Uh, so that's how it started. Later on, um, as it started developing and as more brands are, are now becoming conscious of you know how to create a garment and how to make it to not damage the environment and what you know uh, products what uh, materials to use or how to produce it um and and i mean dry clean only curating vintage it's already you know giving clothing a second life so that, that's how i fell into it and, and it just it, it works and it's conscious and 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 when you tell people about it, it gives them the feel of, you know, they're making a difference by dressing, they're, they're, they're conscious about their shopping. So it, it just became, now it's like a core part of what I do since uh, we give life a second meaning uh, with clothing. Yeah, that's amazing. No, I, I love that. Um, and is there like, I guess, it, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm getting too like esoteric, but is there like a story that you hope to tell, like you wish to tell with your collection? Uh, with the collection, with the curation? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, again, it's, it's a very personal feel when it comes to curating um, anything. I, you know, enjoy traveling and, and, taking inspiration from uh, buildings, architectures, uh, streets that I get to see when I'm traveling. So a lot of that actually translates in, in the clothing uh, because, you know, you go to a certain place and, and, and everything is, is 
it's a certain color or like certain, you know, I remember traveling to Santa Monica for the first time a couple of years ago and, and I couldn't believe that how every house was just pastel. And then I remember coming back and then I was like, I'm going to make a pastel color palette. So then there's a story of a trip that I went to and I took all that architecture and put it into a collection. That's super exciting and so thoughtful because you yeah. wouldn't think that you wouldn't like, usually you would think somebody would do that with like a collection that they were designing from scratch. But yeah. I love that you were able to take that inspiration and put it into the way you collected um, the, the clothing. Yeah. So that, that's really inspiring yeah. to hear. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like remember that. shopping around and, and I kept on thinking of like the particular colors that the houses would be. And those were the particular colors that I wanted every piece to be. That's so great. I love that. Um, so, I mean, through this process, through this journey, and you call it a project. Can I ask you, you, you talk, when we talk about it, you say, oh, it's a project I'm working on. What, what, why is it characterized for you as a project? What does that mean to you? Um, well, to me right now, it's a project because that's what I'm able to do with my color blindness, you know, and the way I see color, like my relationship with color. But I know that uh, just like anything, uh, it's a gift. Uh, as a, it's a creative gift. So I know that I could do other things with it. And right now I happen to be doing clothing and, and, you know, be making, uh, stories through, through clothing color palettes, but I would like to take it into a more, uh, expanded into something different, maybe something that's like, now it's a curated collection for home, but it, it still follows a color palette or it's a curated, uh, it's a curated set, you know, uh, I want to be able to create a, uh, maybe a movie set or something that just follows my color palette and the colors that I'm able to see. So I don't know, you know, but cause fashion is constantly changing. So I start, I, now I, I, I'm starting with clothing and I'm experimenting with it and it's allowing me to move into other directions. That's why I call it a project because I don't think it's fully defined. You know, I hope that maybe with, the, with time and years, I can say, okay, this is what dry clean only is. You know, it, it's this, it's that, or it's just this in particular. Right now I'm just experimenting with clothing. I love that. I love, I love the way you're yeah. framing it and what it means to you and that it's something that's evolving and it's alive and it can shift yeah. and change and become something else. I think that's really exciting. Um, yeah. and what, <laughs> yeah. And, um, what would you say have been your biggest challenges, like in, in, you know, creating this, this collection that you sell? Um, I think it's uh, the biggest challenge has always been like where to go next. Uh, because like you would do something like when I started some, when I started doing it, you know, and I did like the first capsule and it sold and I was like, oh, this is so awesome. People re are reacting to it. And then I started doing some consignment pieces or uh, some boutiques, and then that was also working. So it was it, the biggest challenge has always been like, where do I go next? And how do I know that this is the right thing to do? Uh, because, you know, when you're starting a, a project, you really don't know where, what to do next. So that's my biggest challenge. I, I'm always questioning, what am I doing next? Yeah. I still want to say, I, st I, even you calling it like a capsule collection, like I, like you really, you speak about it. Like it's like a brand, like a brand new collection, um, which is so yeah. interesting to me. Like it's the color palette. It's, you know, it's a capsule. Like I love the way, yeah. you know, I love that energy that you're bringing to, to vintage clothing yeah. and to create something new with it in, in the way yeah. of just packaging it and marketing it as like a, yeah, it's a, a lot collection. Of the end of the day. Yeah. What? It's a lot of branding at the end of the day. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. No, I love that. I, I really, I, I love, I love what you're doing. Um, and what would you say, what would you say have been the greatest gifts that have come from you starting this project? Um, I think the greatest gifts have been the people that I've met throughout the, you know, working on it and expanding it. I think the creatives that I've gotten to work with photographers or, or even the customer, sometimes you would, you know, just create a special bond with a certain customer and then they, they have particular stories and then you understand why they connect with your product or why they connect with what you're doing. So that's, it's been great to just meet different people throughout the process. So when you say customers, do you mean like people that are costume designing different films or TV, they're looking for clothing to, um, to wardrobe? Yeah, from, yeah. From, 
from friends to particular people that need a certain piece or uh, anything, anyone or, or someone who's looking to collaborate and, and they're interested in it and they want to photograph a certain piece from, you know, a stylist, from mm -hmm. anyone that's interested in what you're doing. Yeah, that's great. Stylist too. Yeah. Um, and how would you say the pandemic? Because I mean, we are in the, you know, we are, we are in this global pandemic. Um, so I, I kind of need to ask the question, how would you say the pandemic has affected your business? Um, I think the uncertainty, um, because, you know, I, I'd like to think that I had a plan of what I was doing or mm. half a plan maybe. And with the pandemic happen, happening now, I don't even have half a plan. So it's more of uh, choosing where to go next and, and what to do to still be able to do it and adapt it to what's happening. Like, for example, online, you know, like most, most things are online now. Uh, before pandemic, I would have people come into my studio and look at the pieces. Uh, if a stylist was looking for something, you know, I was able to like welcome them into my space and make it more of an experience, make it more of me and, and, and who I am and what I'm doing. Now that everything's virtual, it's a little harder because even with, you know, doing like a pool or buying something, people want to be able to touch it and, and try it on. So... Mm -hmm. so yeah, that, that has been a challenge is choosing where to go with it because of where we are. Yeah. That makes total sense. Um, yeah. Um, I guess what I want to ask you next is, um, cause there are some people that may be watching that are, you know, they're, they want to be entrepreneurs and, you know, mm -hmm. they, they want to get into fashion or, um, things like that. So I just want to ask what, um, do you have, uh, can you give us any hot tips that you would give to anybody that's just starting out? Um, I think that a lot of research, you know, if you find something that interests you or you see something that triggers uh, something in you uh, to create something that you feel like you connect with, uh, research. You know, I remember uh, when I first realized that what I was doing was benefiting the planet because it's uh, sustainable. I, I went into days of doing research about sustainability and like all the terminology and what it means to be sustainable and or there's so many other words and so many other categories of uh, sustainable. And so research, if something interests you, just go for it, look for it, you know, watch videos, tutorials, master classes, everything. So just take, just take a lot in, just kind of get out there, yeah. research, take, take a lot in and just kind of disseminate what you're learning and all the findings. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. great. So, um, what would you tell a person that might have a perceived setback, you know, that maybe they feel like that's preventing them from success? You know, it, it, it's, I guess I've never thought about it like that, but if you think about it as a creative, it could be like, uh, I, I, there's certain things that I couldn't do because the way I see color. So I, I guess it makes sense, but, um, a setback, something that I would, I would tell someone, uh, you know, I think that just sometimes I, I found myself stuck. I found myself like just stuck, not moving forward or like moving back instead of forward. And I realized that it's really important, you know, as a creative or as any type of uh, uh, person that's trying to create something or, or make something or start a project. Sometimes you need to take a break um, to breathe and, and rethink what you're doing, rebrand yourself as I like to say it, uh, because it's, it's so important, you know, you can't just go, go, go. It's because it, especially with starting a social media brand or anything that involves people's uh, likeness and thumbs up or double hearts or like, you know, you're constantly waiting for that, like social reaction to what you're making, that there's always the pressure of make, 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 make. And I don't think humans really work like that, especially creatives. Sometimes I need to take a long, long break until I can finally give you something that's, you know, me, me and it's authentic and it's not just made because of pressure. So I would say taking a break has been, you know, a great lesson for me. It makes sense. I mean, well, there's all this talk about the fashion calendar and how everybody has to come up with, you know, five collections a year and, you know, merchandise being shipped like, 
uh, 12 months um, out of the year. And it's, it's this is hamster wheel of designing. And now, you know, in the industry, the industry is all um, kind of upside down is like, who's, you know, who's coming out with brand, you know, how many collections they're going to be coming out with and how frequently mm -hmm. and that it's been a hamster wheel. It's I know even for me, it's like you, you finish one collection and then you start marketing it and you're, boom, you you're, you're already creative. Yeah. There's no, there's no time to, to just, yeah, to really just like take it in and to, to, like you said, to kind of be in a place that you can be introspective and then come out with something that's authentic. Not like, just like, okay, I'm on a deadline. Everything was always so deadline oriented for me, um, doing the collection, like yeah. five big collections a year. It's, it's a lot. So I like that you're you know, saying you that can creativity and that's what it feels like when someone is asking you, like you're saying to produce like five, you know, that's you maybe, yeah, you can't do that. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's interesting that I think that we're coming to that now. Um, but I guess, um, I'm just double checking. I want to make sure I asked you everything. So I guess what are the next steps for you and dry clean only right now? Um, so I'm actually, I'm actually moving. I'm making the move. I've decided to become by coastal. Um, not only because I hate New York winters, but also because I think it'll to, to, to move somewhere else and to learn a different culture and, and define more of what I'm trying to do. Uh, so I'm moving to LA, uh, which is great because it's going to allow me to do much research on what people like and why they like what I do and how it, you know, why my product always ends up in LA, you know? So, uh, that's something that's next. Uh, I want to start, like I said, curating maybe more, uh, of a home product collection, um, throughout my travels. I, there's so much things that are out there that, you know, like generations don't even have the idea that they were out there, you know, like eighties, uh, eighties ceramic. There's such a, that's, that particularly has been one of my new things, uh, just ceramics from the 80s. And it's incredible the things you can do with them or how you can reinvent them or how you can, you know, restyle them in a home. So that would be a next move, uh, just move, moving into more products and different things and different cities. I love that. I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot more about you, Oscar Sanchez. I think you are hot, hot, hot and just beginning. So I'm super excited to follow your journey. Um, where can people find you on social, like uh, uh, your outlets on social uh, media? On social media, uh, um, my main uh, page is Dry Clean Only NYC. And then for all of our uh, studio staff, uh, Dry Clean Only Studio. So that's dry clean only, I see, and dry clean only studio. Okay. I will drop everything. Um, I'll drop everything, all the links down into the comments, guys. So you could um, just click on the link in the description. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bid you farewell for one second, and then I'm going to um, – I'm going to come right back. So I'm going to say thank you so much for this interview. It's been awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank you. I will. I'll probably see you in LA. <laughs> yes. 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 You will. This is this is incredible. Thank you so much for opening your space and and making me question actually what I'm doing with the brand because because your questions have not only uh, been answered for the public but also been answered for myself because certain things that I needed to you know question and answer so that was i'm great. so happy i'm so happy meanwhile the sun is quickly i'm like i gotta get off the sun's quickly setting here but no i am so happy for you that is so great thank you so much again oscar thank you thank Bye. you kisses and good luck to you bye thanks <laughs> So I'm going to drop into the links, Oscar's um, Instagram and every, all his social channels. And um, if you got value, please subscribe, like, and share the content. You could also follow me on the Fashion Masterclass on Instagram. And uh, you can jump into the Facebook group, the Fashion Masterclass. So that's it for now. Um, and I will see you in the next episode.